So tonight on the podcast, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to address uh, something that Dr. Umar Johnson, he says now he wants to be addressed as Dr. Umar Ifatunde, and that's what he wants to be addressed. We'll go ahead and respect him in that uh, sense and address what you know, he likes to be called. You know, we live in a time period where people are, want to be addressed as pronouns and, you know, different genders and all kinds of things that people like to be addressed by. So if someone in the community would like to be addressed by a certain name, I think that should be something that we should do uh, out of respect to him. Now, of course, you know, Umar himself, Dr. Umar, uh, to be exact, um, you know, he says a whole lot of things that I definitely agree with. Um, it's just maybe a few things I disagree with, but I agree with him a lot more than I disagree with him. Correct. So he's in, he was in South Africa. Um, he was invited there to be a part of some events and he was doing, you know, some, you know, in, interviews while he was in South Africa and he was on the, uh, Punel show. Uh, I never heard of that brother, uh, before I know when I was last in South Africa, um, you know, I've always went on newsroom Africa and shout out to newsroom Africa out there in Johannesburg. A uh, great news outlet uh, to be on. I think I was on there about, you know, twi- I think two or three times already um, on Newsroom Africa. And during this interview, uh, it was it was something that I, I heard him say. And I said, oh, OK. Now, you know, we've been really um, covering uh, the Democrats and we got to keep, you know, on their neck all the way up to the election. Why is that? Because we are battling for the survival of the black man and woman of America. The Democrat party to me is more dangerous than even white supremacists. You say what? Yes, they are because they're what they're doing. The black people will harm us for many, many years. The white supremacists may attack you at that moment. And we know how to fight back, but the Democrat is putting in policies. The Democrat is flooding the cities with people who didn't vote for them, didn't pay taxes or anything in your city. And these people are coming in from countries where anti-black racism is practiced, bringing a problem to our communities. Now I want you to listen to what Dr. Umar says, what black people should do in this next election. Let's roll that. I would like for South African to do exactly what I want black America to do. The next presidential election, for America is next year. Mm-hmm. The next presidential election for South Africa is next year. Yeah, I would wish all my South African brothers and sisters, just like all my American African brothers and sisters, don't vote for either party. Show them your power. If nobody shows up to vote in the next election, whoever loses will recognize how much they lost out on not catering to the grassroots black vote. And as a result of that, the next election in 2028, they'll be eating out of your hands. The same thing in America. Don't give the Democrat your vote. Show them that you will no longer be taken advantage of. Yeah, you may have to deal with a Republican president for four years, but guess what? The Democrats haven't been no walk in the park either. Mm. Show the Democrats that if you don't deliver on the things that matter to us, not to the Chinese, not to the immigrants, not to the homosexuals, to black people, show us that we matter and we will return the vote to you. The best way to influence the political process is to not participate in it in one election cycle and let the power structure see your power. But it's not likely to happen. You know why? Because the ANC, the EFF, just like the Republicans and the Democrats and everybody else, they make black people. There's a tendency to make black people feel bad for not participating in the electoral process. They tell you things like, you know, your ancestors died for you to have a right to vote. No, they didn't. Nobody died for you to have the right to vote. They died for you to be free. They died for liberty. They died for justice. They died for equality. They saw the vote as the quickest means to achieve that. But now, 29 years after apartheid, we can clearly see, as you guys are going into your sixth election cycle, I believe it is, voting ain't going to change nothing in South Africa. So withdraw from the political process. Show them your power. In the next cycle, they'll eat out of your hands. Everything he just said was spot on and there's nothing he said that I disagree with. Of course, he was talking about South African politics as well. I try not to dive into their politics because I'm not there. And a couple of my friends over there say, yeah, just leave that alone. 
um, because it gets crazy over here with that. That's why I'm a firm believer. I stay in my lane and discuss American politics. Uh, and that's why I'm most better suited, at least in that discussion. Uh, that white supremacy is global and definitely I, I can definitely talk about that over there. Right. But Dr. Umar says, do not give the Democrats your vote. Don't give it to them. I've been preaching every night that I present the podcast to not give the Democrats your vote. He also said you may have to deal with a Republican, but the Democrats have not been a walk in the park for black people. They have not. He also touched on how they prioritize everybody else except you black man and woman who take your time to go vote and see, this is the issue why a lot of you continue to vote Democrat. You really in your heart believe in the Democrats. You believe in them like you're supposed to believe in God himself. This is why you continually go vote for them at a rate of 87, sometimes 90% some places because you really believe in that party. You believe what they tell you. You believe the lying principles that they supposedly have. And every time they come to your neighborhood, they hold your babies. They get Reverend pork chop to let them up there in your churches. And Reverend pork chop is leading you to the slaughter too. Cause Reverend pork chop get his free money tax free promoting the Democrats because he get a little kickback. Cause you know, Reverend pork chop, he got to get his right. He got to pay that Bentley note. They present spirituality with Democrats. And this is why a lot of you liken the Democrat party as God's party, because you have seen Reverend Porkchop bring in Joe Biden and Kamala and everybody else into the church. He has never brought in both parties and say, listen, I want you to hear what the Democrats say. I want you to listen to the Republican, what they got to say, and y'all make your own decision, what you would like to do. I just want you to hear both sides. You giving them just the Democrats. And the only time the Democrats come around is election time. I remember I had a conversation with my father and he was mentioning that. He said, yeah, the only time I see them is just when it's time to vote for them. Other than that, they disappear. I don't see them no more because that's all you good for black America is to vote for them, to give them power. Do you realize when, when Umar talks about your power, no other group in this country has the balance of power politically like black America. They have said on all their white media outlets that black America determines elections. They've been saying this since the sixties. Cause I also heard this on, on a program from the 1960s when it was less black Americans than it is today. That black America determined elections because we are a big block of voters and a good swing vote. But yet the Democrat party don't respect you enough to say, wait a minute, those black people, if it wouldn't be for them, we wouldn't be in office. They were prioritized as Dr. Umar said, the Chinese, they were prioritized to LGBT. They're going to prioritize people coming just across the border yesterday over you who've been fighting in this land, who've been toiling in this land, who built America, who are owed reparations for all your hard work, your ingenuity, all your sacrifice. You have fought in every war for the United States of America. It would not be no United States of America if it wouldn't be for Christmas addicts, a black man. These people never even got free on their own. They begged you to help us fight in a revolutionary war so you can get the British off our backs because they couldn't do it by themselves. These people got the nerve to come to you and say how great they are, how they built America, how they did it. No, you didn't build crap by yourself. And to this day, you're still not doing anything by yourself because Ron DeSantis just really pulled y'all card when he got the immigrants out of there and told them you can't be here no more without no papers working. They would not go take those jobs. they got videos of, of, of the white people on the farms and everything, construction companies saying that they can't even cut it. 
And it's been that way. When they first got here, they tried to establish a colony, and within a year it failed. They was cannibalizing each other. It didn't do nothing good for them until they brought our ancestors in. Understand? So we always have been a pivotal part of America and also a pivotal part of the Western world because not only us, but they had to bring us to the Caribbean, our people. They had to bring us to the European countries. They had to bring us to, to South America, Central America, because they couldn't build nothing without the black man and woman on their own. Understand that you are very important globally. They put you down. They want you to feel bad about yourself. They want you to uh, uh, think you have no worth. You are worth more than anything else. They wanted the architects. They couldn't build nothing on their own. So continuing. They disrespect you and me all the time. The Democrat Party. And enough is enough. What Dr. Umar said was a great suggestion. He said, don't give the Democrats your vote. I say the same thing. Now there's two ways you can do that. You could do it. Dr. Umar says and say, Hey, basically he's saying, sit it out, sit it out for an election cycle and don't give the Democrats your vote. Let, let them eat cake. Tell them, go ask the LGBT for the vote. Tell them, go ask the Asian community, the, the, uh, the Jewish community, go, go ask, uh, uh, the immigrants that just can't cross the border, go ask them to vote for you. Go ask them. Now the Asian community should come out in droves because you gave them a hate crime bill. The LGBT should come out in droves because you're weaponizing uh, the United States government against Uganda right now for them. They should be coming out in dro droves voting for the Democrat party, right? All these other groups they have prioritized. They should be the first one in line voting for the Democrats, but the Democrat strategy is not going to those other groups. The Democrat strategy is to go to you, not them. The Democrats have every right to go to the Asians and say, Hey, wait a minute. We gave you a hate crime bill. We promoted propaganda against the black American for you. So the least you can do is get your behind out there and vote Democrat. All y'all need to vote Democrat, but you know, what's going to happen. They're not going to do it. And a lot of Asian people don't vote anyway. Not like black people do. No other group votes like we vote. None. Everybody's votes is split. You understand? And there's a lot of Asian people here that is not registered to vote. It's like, it's a lot of Hispanics here. that's not registered to vote, but they rather prioritize all these other groups over the black man and woman who have been the most faithful voting block in this country. And yet they continue to disrespect you. And this is why we are telling you, do not vote for a Democrat party who will constantly disrespect you. They are humiliating you every single day by doing for other groups of people. You say you need an anti-black hate crime bill. They can give you that very quick. They talk about reparations. Listen, reparations need to be done too, but the anti-black hate crime bill can be done just as quick as they done the one for the Asians. But the Democrats don't want to give you an anti-black hate crime bill because they know that they people will be mass incarcerated if they give you that. See, they don't want the black man and woman of America protected. The Democrats, they don't. You talk about the Republicans. Listen, I'm with you about the Republicans. There's a, there's a center right part of the Republican party, which got a little bit more sense i talk to them all day long. Then you got that hardcore, right? That white supremacists like to be a part of. And that's really the main reason why black people won't really go full fledged Republican because of that white supremacist wing that's in that party. Now, if the center right people was controlling the party, I think more black people would be willing to say, yeah, I'm gonna go on the other side. And some black people may say, Hey, look, you know, I'm going to do a protest vote, not because I want to be a Republican, but I just want to show the Democrats don't play with us. Right. And because I want to show them not to play with us, I want it quantified because they're going to look at how we vote. And I want that quantified. And when we show up in bigger numbers to vote for Republicans, 
Then we can look back and say, the only reason we did it is because you did nothing for us, and we wanted to get you out of office to teach you a lesson. Because one thing about the Republicans, they're not going to be giving these all these other groups something. Nobody going to get nothing. How about that? If I can't get nothing, nobody else gets something. I'd rather Republican in there. That, that way nobody get nothing. But I don't want to be voting for you, and then you giving it to everybody else, but my family can't eat. Your family can't eat either. You watching everybody else getting a, a big buffet presented to them, but we don't even get a, a freaking cracker, a little Ritz cracker. We don't even get that as black people. And then you want to come to us while we starving, while we suffering, and giving $51 million to people that just come across that didn't vote for nobody. They not suffering the police uh, uh, executions like the black man and woman is of America, but yet they get our tax dollars. The Democrats have done this. And then they want to wag their finger at you. And this is, this is something they keep saying, brothers and sisters. I see this little tactic because when y'all show your hand, I'm going to expose it. So this is one tactic the shields use. Well, I know the Democrats aren't perfect and, you know, we do need to criticize the Democrats because, yes, I mean, they, they could do a lot better. But why would you want to be voting for the Republicans? Who says somebody want to vote Republican? Somebody, some people saying I ain't voting for that one of them because I want to show both of them. that now, you know what? I, I, I don't want to deal with none of y'all until you have something for black people. Period. They will play that game with you and it's going to lead into the next part of what I want to get into as well about the weaponization of shame for not voting for the Democrats. So let me run that clip real quick of Dr. Umar. Just, just I'm going to play it one more time and I want you to hear him talk about that. But it's not likely to happen. You know why? Because the ANC, the EFF, just like the Republicans and the Democrats and everybody else, they make black people, there's a tendency to make black people feel bad for not participating in the electoral yeah. process. They tell you things like, you know, your ancestors died for you to have a right to vote. Yeah. No, they didn't. Nobody died for you to have the right to vote. They died for you to be free. They died for liberty. They died for justice. They died for equality. They saw the vote as the quickest means to achieve that. This tactic of shaming you, brothers and sisters, with more grassroots mentality, is they always trying to shame you because they know how you are about the history of your people in America. You honor your ancestors' fight for freedom, for justice, for equality, for the pursuit of happiness in America. You honor that. So when they tell you, oh, well, you, you're shaming your ancestors by not voting, they're taking a, a, a particular situation out of our history, and you know you revere them and using them as a means to get you in line and control. That is a form of witchcraft that these Democrat shields are using against you. Witchcraft is about control and divination. And that is a form of witchcraft to try to control you. Yes, witchcraft could be done in many ways, brothers and sisters. And these shields are using a form of witchcraft to try to control you, to get you to do exactly what they pay masters want them to do, is for you to line up and vote Democrat and you get nothing. Every election you have voted Democrat and you are going deeper and deeper and deeper into despair. Do you see the shields in despair? Do you look at Boule Martin? Does he look like he's in despair? He, he looked like he's doing very good for himself and he's going to a lot of luncheons. A lot of them. Joy Reed. Does she look like she's in despair? She's doing very good for herself. Her job is to tell you to go vote Democrat so she can get extra bonuses on her checks or speaking fees or whatever the case may be with, with them, whatever they getting behind the scenes. Or they may say, Hey, look, um, Boule, if you get them, Demo if you get them to vote Democrat, I got some little, I got some government money on the side for you. I earmarked this for you. 
you know, uh, in this bill and I'll make sure you get a hundred thousand dollars. I'll make sure you get five hundred thousand dollars, whatever you want to do with. Right. Just but the only way you get this money is you got to get us in office. If you can convince them to, to vote, then this money's yours. Remember when Boulay Martin was crying, seeing people line up to vote. And the moment Joe Biden got into office, because I remember it, the moment Joe Biden got into office, Boulay Martin got a brand new studio like this. I mean, like, like overnight he got it. And I said, oh, that's what they did with him. See, the thing is, y'all should have played it a little slower than that. Don't hurry up and buy the studio. Like, wait six months. Wait a, t- a time. You know what I'm saying? Wait a, two years or something. Don't just sit up here and realize. And then you look into groups like Black Voters Matter, and you look at all the millions of dollars that's coming in by liberal groups to them to deliver you up. You vote for them and look at your conditions. Remember yesterday, we did a podcast even in St. Louis, Pookie and Ray Ray even see how bad they are and what they are doing to black people. They even don't want to vote for Biden. They want to vote for Trump. Now you don't have to vote for him. You like I said, just don't give your vote to the Democrat. That's the only thing I'm saying. We have to teach the Democrats a lesson about to stop effing with us, man. I don't have to say it like that without saying the word because the Democrats F with us too much because we allow the Democrats to do that. We allow it. This weaponization of shame is what the shields use against you. They try to use it against me, but it don't work because when they come, listen, I'm like this. And I told them if you commit libel against me in a chat, you're blocked. If you play the Democrat shield game using a form of witchcraft to try to control me and talk to me, you're blocked. You're going to have to come to me with some hardcore evidence and facts to make me change my mind and prove to me how the Democrat party have been doing something specifically for black people because they have not black people went out there at the time of George Floyd. They wanted the police reined in. They wanted qualified immunity taken away, but black folks did not even listen to Biden at the time when he said that he did not agree with them losing their qualified immunity. He said that, but it's like black folks. I didn't hear that. I didn't hear it. Biden has said to you, if you don't vote for him, you not black. He didn't tell white people that he didn't tell Hispanics, Asians, Jewish people, no other group of people. He didn't say that to just black folk because they don't respect you because they know that the majority of you going to come in and vote for them 87% or higher. They know Reverend Porkchop is going to bring them in the church house and you liken the Democrat party as God's party. They know this. They know you let them hug, hug your, your babies, kiss your babies. I wouldn't, I don't let, I never let nobody kiss my children. Never when they're that small and you sure ain't not going to kiss them now. I wish I would. I don't know your mouth being hell no, but don't let them shame you into anything. Matter of fact, you don't even need to, to talk to them. You don't need to argue with these shields. You don't need to say nothing. Let the shields come to me. Don't argue with them. Say, look, I, I'm not arguing with you. I'm just gonna just I'm just gonna show you what I'm about to do. I'm not gonna argue with you. I don't have to. There's no reason for you to argue with a shield. None, because the majority of shields don't even have a, a the, the ear of the people and a platform. So they would love for us to be arguing with them to give them some sort of attention. Because if we argue with them, then our audience is gonna be paying attention to them. Understand? We could just gotta keep putting out the hot fire on the Democrat party and let you know what they don't do for black people. Look at California. Look at New York, Democrat central, both of those States. How are black Americans faring in California? Horribly. How are black Americans faring faring in New York? Horribly. Look at Chicago. Now the Democrats is waging direct war against the black man and woman in Chicago, a city where the homeless population, 76% of the population is black people from Chicago. 
18,000 of them are ex-felons because the Democrats say they are friends, but they would not push to make it a crime to discriminate against people with a prison record. And they can do that. You can't discriminate about people with LGBT, but you, but you can discriminate about a prison record. And we need to stand with our brothers and sisters in Chicago. Chicago is something we better pay attention to because if they can get black people out of their neighborhoods and push them out of the city of Chicago, if they successful and you say nothing about it, you, you just kind of complain here and there, but don't stay on those politicians in Chicago is coming to a city near you. They're going to be pushing you out of your city because you and the rest of us in black America didn't stand with our brothers and sisters in Chicago. They need to go put those people in the Hispanic communities where they speak the language and still have the culture. As I said last night, and I saw some of you had kind of say, Oh, I didn't realize that they do not take immigrants and refugees and put them in the black community from black countries. They never do. They never take the Ethiopian and the Nigerian and someone from Sudan and someone from uh, uh, Jamaica or whatever. They never want to put them in the black communities where they would be better suited. No, they put everybody else in our community all the time. Our community is a dumping ground for non-black people. But the people that look like us, the people that we could teach the ropes or whatever, because you know why they don't want to put them in the black communities? Because they don't want us to talk to, with, with them. They don't want us to give them the game and they don't want to bring us no more reinforcements. So they separate the black people coming in from the different countries, put them with, with the folks or everybody else and use a divide and conquer strategy. This is why you see they so turned up and some of them have this anti-black sentiment is because they made sure to separate those brothers and sisters that's coming into this country by refugee status, temporary um, protection status, all different statuses. They coming in sometimes from these different countries. They will not put them with black Americans. That is a strategy of the white supremacists. And we know the white supremacists in the Democrat party is the one that's flooding everybody in. We know this. We have to protect black America or black America will be homeless. Or if you're not going to be homeless, you will be staying 10 people to a house because you can't afford to have a place for your own, for your family. Look in Chicago, Democrat Rahm Emanuel closed 50 schools in black areas, 50 schools. And black people say, no, don't do that. We need these schools. He ain't closed 50 jails. He closed 50 schools, places of education for children. But that was your Obama's homeboy, Rahm Emanuel. The same guy that covered up the execution of Laquan McDonald, that, that guy. Don't let these people shame you when you have a response to what they do in the black people. Don't let them shame you about reparations. You don't have to explain to none of these people about reparations. This country got a lot of money to pay reparations. They just found the other day that this country had gave $1.3 billion to China and Russia. The Republicans just put that out to all these different little projects in those countries, 1.3 billion. But they tell you they don't have no money for reparations or the folks say, I'm not paying for it. Well, you just gave China and Russia 1.3 billion. You didn't say nothing about that. That's why I say, man, the hell with y'all with all that, what you're not going to pay. You pay everything else this country want to do. No, you just hate black people. That's why you say what you say. It's divisive. Yeah, it's divisive because you hate black people. That's why you say that. And when you hear them tell you, well, reparations divisive. Yeah, I know because you hate black people. You got to tell them you hate black people. You Please tell them that because you got to lay it at them. Because if you don't say nothing about the money going to Ukraine 
if I don't see none on your timeline about so-called your tax dollars that you paying for going to Ukraine or going to China, going to Russia, going to all these different countries outside of America. If, if I see none in your timeline criticizing that, then yeah, you hate black people straight up. I'm the guy to tell you that to your face. Black people, we got to stop being so freaking timid because being timid is not getting us anywhere. You need to speak with authority. You need to speak straight. You need to tell them what it is. If you're not going to do nothing for me, I'm not voting for you. It's just that simple. I'm only going to vote for somebody that's going to give me something that's going to benefit me and my community. It's just that simple. And if nobody wants to give it, I just sit it out. It's just that simple. That's a choice too. Newsflash, brothers and sisters, if you don't vote for the Democrats, they're not going to turn off your oxygen. Trust me, they don't have that kind of power. They don't. You need to make them respect you because if you they, they don't respect you, I'm telling you, you are looking at a, a, a permanent underclass status that you'll never get out of. And you look in in five years in Chicago, all those people they brought over there to Chicago, all those people will be above every last black Chicago in there. Minor celebrities and other entrepreneurs, et cetera. We're talking about the everyday um, hardworking black person. They'll get above you because they look at, they're being assisted to. They won't give $51 million to the black people in Chicago to help them, but they give them $51 million. To help them get a leg up. Those people are going to take jobs. That's going to be half of the price on the wage. You're going to get fired because that's just the way it's going to work. You want to get fired. They're going to be happy to take those jobs at half the pay. They are. Cause that's a big, that's a big step up for them. And you can not going to be to find a job. Cause I'm telling you these, these employers would rather hire them cause they don't have to pay them much over you. Cause they know they got to pay you. They know that. So you better stand with Chicago right now, but it's the Democrat party. Brandon Johnson, he needs a recall. Y'all need to recall him. That should be something that should galvanize all black people in Chicago. Say, no, we need a recall election. He got to go. He got to go. He didn't mess up. He got to go. That's how you show the Democrat party not to mess with you. But we do not need to give the Democrat party anything because they have disrespected us too much. And for too long and don't let them use witchcraft on you about your ancestors because that's nothing but devilment. You tell them my ancestors for, for me to be free. My ancestors were courageous. They weren't no cowards and my ancestors weren't leaning on no white supremacists for anything because if that's the case. We'll still be in the same condition that we were in back in that time period. And I got to continue to fight for freedom. I got to continue to fight for justice as my ancestors did. And fighting for justice is to make sure that my children and your children are not in the condition that we're in today. This is the fight of your generation right now fighting to save black America from being put out of their homes, out of their neighborhoods that they built that they maintained that the grandmama and grand and pappy and all kinds of other ones was in these neighborhoods. Don't let them push you out. Cause that's what the Democrats are trying to do. Chicago. I'm with you. You stay in, you fight. You let these Democrats know. Yes. Somebody told me that Chicago been a Democrat city since 1929. Another person say, well, Phil, you can give it up. Chicago's a Democrat city. It's never going to change. I don't care what it changed into personally. I don't. What I want black people to do is take a stand and fight. Take a stand. I said before, just don't give your vote to the Democrat. If you say, Hey, I'm going to sit it out. I don't want to give it to nobody. It's good with me. Or if you say, you know what? I'm going to spite the Democrats and vote Republican. That's good with me too. Cause trust me when it comes, when black folks get it in their head, things flip. They flip. Now, if the Republican party was smart. They would actually come in right now, but let me tell you something else. I saw some people leaving messages. Some of you white conservatives, I see you coming in the chat and you liking these videos, huh? 
But let me tell you something. Let me talk about you for a minute. If you really want black people to join your, your movement and your party, advocate reparations. Advocate that. If you really, you say that the Republicans fought for black people. It was the Democrats that were so racist and it nails the Klan, X, Y, Z. Okay. White conservatives. Well, pick up that mantle once again, then and fight for black people, fight for reparations for black people, fight for anti-black hate crime bill for black people, white conservatives. If you, cause you like these, you like these messages, right? Because don't, don't think just because I'm talking about the Democrats and you showing up thinking I'm a better option. Okay, how are you a better option? If you're talking about reparations, if you're talking about an anti-black hate crime bill, I know you talk about the immigration thing, and that's we definitely with y'all on that. But let's talk about issues um, in, in well, that's going to help black people. Y'all call complain on the cops too, right? Some of y'all, you complain about big government. Well, let's talk about these things that could help black people. You say you want to see people come off of welfare. Well, let's talk about. Uh, uh, different programs that can be given to entrepreneurs in the black community that you can inject capital or loans through the SBA to help black people with, with businesses so they can grow their own businesses. So they don't have to be on welfare and food stamps, white conservatives. I mean, if you really want black people and you excited about it, cause I've been seeing you in the chat. No, don't, don't think I won't come at you and tell you, Oh, we need something. Cause I'm not telling them just to go over there with you. No, no, we need something from you too. You're not going to get away with the Democrats are getting away with not giving us crap. If you want the black vote, then you need to give black people something. It's just that simple. Greg Abbott just signed the, uh, the crown act where you can't discriminate with hair in Texas. So that's a step in the right direction. I applaud Greg Abbott for that. Well, since he did the crown act, right? Then y'all can open up for, for some more things for black people. So don't, don't come over here just getting all giddy because I'm getting at the Democrats. Because we because no, 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 no. I'm not telling my people just to go wholesale vote for you. No. You need to give something. Like Trump. I like a lot of things Trump talk about, but I need to fully see what everything Trump is talking about. Trump is great for business. I admit that. And that's one, one of the big reasons I'm on that. Because... Black, I talked to black people that they said that 401ks was up, crypto was up, uh, their businesses was good, taxes was good, everything was good with him, and you could save money on taxes. Your 401 is up, everything is up, your investments is up. That plenty of black people is involved with that now. But at the same time, I'm listening to what Trump's saying too. Just to make sure. Because just because I like some things Trump do doesn't mean I'm gonna just go run and vote for him for no reason. I need to see what he got going on, but I know I'm not giving a vote to a Democrat. I'm telling you that. So understand that my, I told everybody my votes for sale. If the Republicans want it, present something to me. And if they don't got nothing, that's cool. I'm just going to chill my nerves. It's just that simple. So don't come over here getting all giddy about what I'm saying. Cause I need, I'm not that. So I'm not your black conservatives. I have a lot of conservative ideals and most black people are conservative. And actually you look at our ideals, but I'm not going to just join with you and just be some bootlick. No, I'm not that. I will never be that. Sitting up here letting, letting that racist wing in the, in the Republican party that they have talk crap about black people. And I just agree with it. Hell no. I'm a child. Check you in two seconds. Just like I'll check the Democrats. And every, uh, every party can get it from me. You better believe that. So present something for black people. How about that? Present something for black people. And then we can listen about, listen, you got a politician that's major or whatever. And, and he say he can present something for black people. Cause you, if you come to me, I won't talk about black people. I don't want to talk about other groups. I don't want, I'm not that all people crap. I don't want to hear that. Cause all people getting benefited minus black people. But ladies and gentlemen in the, in the community, just think about what Dr. Umar says. Just think about what I'm telling you. I agree with Umar on a lot of things on this. Definitely. The Democrats don't deserve our vote because they have never done nothing for us. And we have to take a stand or we will be permanently destroyed in the country that we built.